I'm here to introduce to you the Faster 6000 electric bike. Woo. Now, I have seen these bikes for sale on Alibaba, but these will be bikes direct from China, built to Chinese spec, which is not produced to the right specifications for UK homologation. To meet the UK regulations, of course, and for mass production to the public. And it will not be easily registered, so don't be fooled into thinking you can grab one yourself, just get on it and ride. Now, we know from personal experience that what the Chinese produce for themselves are by no means anywhere near the quality fit for UK standards. So what powers it? Well, the bike uses a 6,000 watt Dayi motor, Dayi motor, which is a massive company in China, and it uses a 72 volt, 100 amp hour battery, which is in here but you will never be able to get it out unless you get all the plastics off. And this is storage. Look, you can get all sorts of stuff in there, like um, a couple of sandwiches and a drink. Maybe a bottle of drink, you can probably get it down there and down there. Interesting, storage. Um, other than that, under here, all you've got is the main power cutoff switch and nothing else because it's electric. Oh, and the alarm unit. So soundy stuff. Now, one easy to see, you've got a rev counter going across the top here, um, your charge here, um, your total mileage, and your um, park mode or one, two, three mode. Um, when it's on the center stand, one mode, you can gently pull away, well I say pull away, open the throttle and the back wheel will spin because it's a serene gentle acceleration whereas three mode is by mode. So um, yeah, if you hold the brake, take P off, it goes into one mode, um, you've got a generic horn. So you turn the lights on, you can see here you've got main beam and dip and I'll bring you around the front again so you can see just how powerful those lights are. But yeah, it's quite simple, easy to read, no frills, tells you what you need to know. So with your lights off and the ignition on, you get uh, the little circles around the uh, lights, then with your side lights on, it's the same thing, um, main light and then main beam there. So they're quite bright and of course they're LED so uh, you'll definitely be able to see where you're going. And the indicators are also LED. The thing I will say is I'm not really a fan of this door unit. That is a bit cheap to be honest. Um, not a fan of that. I would look to see if that could be better made. Um, I mean at the end of the day it's a plastic cover that goes over a plastic storage unit but it just feels a bit flimsy on that hinge and that could be painted as well. But other than that you know it's just a little storage cubby hole. Um, under here all you've got as I say is the main cutoff switch and nothing much else. So there you go, nothing to play with. What about the important stuff like speed, I hear you ask? Well, the bike is said to do 63 miles an hour. 63 miles an hour. And the range, 120 miles. And apparently, and you get a 110 on the front and a 180 on the back. Now the rubber is made by Fabian not a brand I've heard of to be honest, but with those sizes, the choice is endless with what you can put on it. It comes with this uh, Mercedes style remote start with alarm and a mobilizer fob. Um, so you can unlock it, lock it, find the bike. It does four beeps, five beeps even. And uh, when you're in a car park, if you can't find your bike, that will help you find it. So uh, yeah, it's wireless, so it doesn't run on GPS or anything like that. Um, very handy little feature to have, I think. Uh, nice little key and a traditional key for the start, but obviously you don't necessarily need that key because you can run it with a remote start. You just have to remember to switch your bike off before you walk away. Front brake, rear brake. 
it's going to be a bit of an experience, but um, I don't think it's going to be difficult to get used to. It's just different. And different is good, apparently. Now, being... In the middle of the distance of the there, we don't know what's going on with that uh, left counter there. It's a bit bumpers. I'm sorry for this car, I it's a bit greasy. I don't know what these uh, Fabian tyres are like. Again, didn't feel any issues there. No sign of any slippage. Pretty pleased with that. The seat position is very comfortable, the foot peg position is very comfortable, the handlebars are very comfortable, and uh, I don't really have anything negative to say about the ride at all. Very pleasantly surprised. In the moment we get onto the 60 mile an hour section, we'll see when we hit 60. And still, only one bar down. So far we've done 6 miles. Okay, one handed. I don't know if you can see over there, there's a little bit of uh, left and right vibration on the handlebars. Um, so you do need to hold on both hands, but it's not horrendous, but you can just see the vibration. Weirdly, you can't feel the vibration. I've now lost two bars. And seven miles. So of course, 120 miles will be at um, general speeds. So we'll see what we can do as far as uh, normal speeds for normal people are concerned. Okay, so we go around this roundabout. A little bit jolty, nothing major, and here we go. So now we go up to the 60 mile an hour section. I'll pull that at 50, and then see what it does from 50 to 60. This is not the best of roads, no. Right, up to 60, see if we get to 60 before the next roundabout. Oh, it actually creeps up quite well. No different to any other one to five combustion engine motorcycle, to be honest. I do 56, 57, let's bear in mind that I am going to get 15 stone now, 58, oh, 59, I'm going to break, I've got to break, it's alright. Brakes are okay. Right, 60 again, let's try it. Come on. 51, 52, 53, 55, what are that? 54, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. Look at that, not a problem. And there's no signs of it holding it back. What are that? No signs of it holding back at all. 63. And I'm not leaning over, I'm sitting upright. Um, I'm not being jostled about, as you can hear probably from my voice, it's still absolutely fine. I'm keeping up with the flow of traffic. I feel comfortable. The bike feels like it's doing what it's supposed to do. Um, I don't feel that I'm that confident in the bike's ability. I don't know what this guy in front is doing. Does he think I'm going to say? I've got no noise, no creaks, no bumps. Um, I don't feel like I'm on a cheap bit of plastic at all. Brakes pull up well. And here we go. Up to speed. Pleasing, very pleasing. Okay, and uh, I'm back. Now, I'm actually very, very pleasantly surprised by the ride. I was expecting it to be a lot worse than it was, and I was pleasantly surprised. So, um, as you can see, outside, the fog has descended, the cold has descended. Um, it's... Uh, awful conditions out there for filming, for flying, and for riding, especially when you're testing a bike. And I'm sorry um, if it comes across like that on the camera, but we've tried our best. Now, all I'm gonna do here is just switch this on and you can see what battery life is left. Now we have done, um, let me see, it was on 590. Um, we have done 36 miles and we've got, over half the battery life left. So there you go. Now, when the bike was dropped off to us yesterday, um, as I rode it across the yard, testing it for a few moments, um, it went from full down to one bar. So it wasn't quite full when we got it. So I should imagine in this weather, flat out, bearing in mind I've had it in three most of the time, so I've been giving it some and then turning it off and on, turning it off and on whilst doing the filming and uh, whilst riding, obviously, stopping and starting, stopping and starting. Um, so it's not ideal as in full battery, ride it, see how long it lasts. And unfortunately, we just haven't got the time for that because we've only got the bike for three days over the weekend. So I apologize for that. Um, but yeah, uh, I can see it doing probably 80, 90 miles by the looks of this. Um, if you ride very gingerly and carefully, then 120, I can't see why not. So there you go. Okay, I just want to add at this point, uh, don't be confused by the uh, background here. 
Um, we've had the faster and the ultra for just two full days to film. And of course, those two days are full of drizzle, mist, fog, rain, and all that nonsense. So I apologize now for any filming issues out on the road with regards to misty, fogged up lenses and rain splattered lenses. I apologize. Right, let's get back to the video. Now, if you want one of these, there is at the moment a four to six week wait, and the price comes in at £5,995 on the road with a two year parts warranty and a three year battery warranty. However, there is an option for £300 to purchase the uh, upgraded extended warranty, which is a five year parts and labour warranty, and that includes the battery. And that warranty is powered through AutoGuard, which is one of the top. Uh, warranty um, suppliers. I use them myself in the shop, so I know they are pretty good. Um, and there you go. Here is the bike. What do you think? Please let me know in the comment section below. Now, a couple of days ago, the government did announce very quickly overnight that they are significantly reducing the subsidy on electric vehicles, cars and bikes. However, this retail price still stands. Thelmoco are going to swallow that cost. So just be mindful of that when you're looking at electric vehicles in the future. There is also a top box and pannier set available for this bike for £195 and that includes the racks. And if the battery does ever need replacing, it will cost £1,000. But with that extended warranty, you wouldn't have to worry about that for five years. So what about the competition? Well, the only thing that's really in the same sort of field is the Super Soco TC Max, the 125 equivalent from Super Soco. That has a price of £5,000 on the road, but it only has a range of 60 miles. And the top speed is 60 miles an hour. So it's very similar, but the range is half what this can do. Um, and that's all I really have to say about the bike, to be honest. Please let me know what you think of the bike. Um, I, the ride is fantastic. I'm very pleased with how it performs on the road, apart from the little niggles that I mentioned earlier. Um, and I'm also very pleased with the range. That's fantastic. Uh, for a bike that you can use as a learner with that kind of acceleration and that kind of speed with that kind of range, I don't think there's much out there for this price that can touch this at the moment. So I'm pretty pleased. There's a few niggles that I think need to be sorted out, but um, that might just be me being fussy, to be honest, um, because a lot of the other bikes that will do the same sort of speed, you're talking probably 10 grand or more. The Zeros that are like the, um, the super bikes are 20, 22,000 pounds. And that's a ridiculous amount of money. So yeah, let me know what you think and uh, let me know what you think. About what you would do if changes needed to be made. And maybe we'll pass that along. Well, they'll see the video, so let me do that again. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. I've said it many times, but um, electric is the way we are going. And I think this is certainly a step in the right direction. And that brings me to the end of this episode of Motors for the Masters. Thank you very much for joining me. We'll be back next time with another electric bike, a 125 equivalent scooter from Thelmoco. We'll check that out. And then we'll be back with those Mondials that I talked about earlier and some other stuff as well. Got lots coming in the future. So please stay tuned for that. If you have any comments to make, I've already said it in the comments section below. I don't know how many times I've got to say it. Um, if you don't, thank you very much for joining. Um, please like, subscribe and share this video. And don't forget to check out our Patreon and our Facebook merchandise shop. And hopefully you'll have a nice Christmas. Well, I'll see you before then. So I'll wish you that then. I'll take that back. I'll say it next time. So until next time, please ride and drive carefully, but have fun. Bye bye.